Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from William Lowell Putnam Mathematical Competition 1989 Problem A3. We wish to prove that if 11 z to the power of 10 plus 10 i times z to the power of 9 plus 10 i times z minus 11 equals 0, if this is the case then the absolute value of z equals 1. Of course, we are considering this polynomial equation over the set of complex numbers. And i, of course, stands for the imaginary unit. So here are my hints for this problem. First, first step is not strictly necessary, but I will do it. Let z be equal i times w, and rewrite our equation in terms of this new variable w. And then you should be able to show the following, that w to the power of 9 equals minus 10w plus 11 over 11w plus 10. Now, write w in standard form, a plus b times i, and show that, after taking the, the modulus on both sides, a squared plus b squared to the power of 9 equals this expression which, we can, which you can see here, and consider separately two cases if a squared plus b squared is less than 1, and if a squared plus b squared is greater than 1. And in both cases you should get a contradiction of some sort. So give this problem a try, and I will see you in just a minute. Alright, so let's take our equation, and let's set let, let z be equal i times w. Notice that then we have two things. Then, of course, the absolute value of z equals the absolute value of w. They are the same, because i has the absolute value of 1. And, moreover, our equation can be rewritten in the following way. 11 i to the power of 10, I will write i squared times i to the power of 8, w to the power of 10, plus 10 i i i to the power of 8 w to the power of 9 plus 10 i i w minus 11 equals 0 and now notice that what is i squared of course i squared is just minus 1 so here we have minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and what is i to the power of 8 well it's minus 1 to the fourth power so it's 1 here and here we have 1 so we have and we can also multiply both sides by minus 1. We can multiply on both sides by minus 1, and we'll get this simpler equation, 11w to the 10th power uh, plus 10w to the 9th power plus 10w plus 11 equals 0. All right. For this equation, we can do the following. Let's factor out from the first uh, first two terms, let's factor out w to the power of 9, we have 11w plus 10, and let's put everything else on the right hand side. Alright, now you can clearly see that this cannot be 0, because this is 0 for w equal minus 10 over 11, uh, but for minus 10 over 11 the right hand side is not 0. So we can safely assume that w is not equal is not equal minus 10 over 11. So we can divide on both sides. And we have the following minus 10 w plus 11 over 11 w plus 10. All right, we have derived this formula. Now, let's write w in standard way, w equals a plus b times i, where a and b are real numbers. What I wish to do is to take the modulus squared on both sides. So from this equation, which is marked in yellow ellipsis, we can write the following, w to the power 18 equals 10 can write it in this way 10 w plus 11 the absolute the modulus squared 11 w plus 10 squared 
All right. Now I will rewrite this expression in terms of a and b. So remember, maybe let's write it here, that then if I write Z, w equals a plus bi, then the modulus of w squared equals just a squared plus b squared. And it's obviously a non-negative number. So we can write the following. Here we have a squared plus b squared to the power of 9. And here we can do the following. We have 10w plus 11. So we have 10a plus 11 is the real part plus 10bi modulus squared and on the and in the denominator we have 11 a plus 10 plus 11 bi modulus squared all right so we have a squared b squared to the power of 9 and now the modulus squared is the real part squared so in this case this plus the imaginary part squared so it's that Perfect. And now, now I will do the following. We can expand both the numerator and the denominator, and we will have 100a squared plus 100b squared plus 121 plus 220a. And in the denominator, we have 121a squared. 121b squared, uh, what else? Plus 100, plus, and again, 220a. The same part. All right, and finally, I will write it in this tricky way. I will write 100 in the parentheses a squared b squared plus 1. So I have covered 100a squared, 100b squared, and 100, so I am left with plus 21. Let's, let's, let's write plus 21 in the end, and I have also 220a. And in the denominator, I will write 121, or maybe, you know what, also, I will write 100 as well. So I have 100a squared, b squared, plus 1, plus 220. And let's see what is missing. Uh, well, 21a squared and 21b squared is missing. So let's add it. Notice that this part is the same as this part. They are the same. Now, maybe, you know what, I will make it bigger. I will put it in the middle. Sorry. Put it in the middle. Let's maybe mark it, because this equation is very important for us. Now, I wish to consider two cases, because basically what I wish to do is to show that a squared plus b squared equals 1. And to do that, I will consider cases where a squared and b squared are greater than 1 or less than 1. So let's consider case number 1, when a squared plus b squared is strictly less than 1 and of course greater than or equal 0 because it's sum of squares notice that then we have the following all right what do we have notice that then maybe i will take this equation right copy it very well and now let's notice the following this number uh, is less than 1, number which is less than 1 raised to the power of 9 is also less than 1. And at the same time, uh, this part is strictly less than 21. So notice that, well, notice that both the numerator, that the numerator is greater than the denominator. So this fraction is definitely less than 1. And also, this is greater than 1. By the way, maybe I should also, maybe I should also, also mention that both 
the denominator and the numerator are of course positive because where well, they are just uh, modulus squared so here we have positive numbers positive numerator and positive denominator and uh, the numerator is greater than the denominator so we have a problem because we have now demonstrated that one is less than one which is contradictory contradiction contradiction and you probably guess what will happen in the second case Case number two, let's change what is what should be changed. All right, so what's changing? We are considering a squared plus b squared to be greater than or be greater than one, sorry. And now let's notice that this time this number is greater than one. So this is greater than one, and this time this part in the denominator is greater than twenty-one. And this time the numerator is less than the denominator. It's less than, so it's so it is uh, yes. Yeah, so it is greater than one. Is greater than. Sorry, I made sorry, my made a mistake. Grave mistake. This is less than one. So in this should be inequality like that, and let's go back in our first case the denominator is less than the numerator so the fraction is greater than one in this case we have it other way around now it's good because it, now this part is greater than one and this time the denominator is greater than the numerator so it's less than one but again we get a contradiction once again get a contradiction once again and it is also case number two, not case number one. So it can only mean one thing. It must be the case. The case that a squared plus b squared equals one, i.e. the modulus of w equals one, i.e. the modulus of z equals one. And this closes our problem and this closes our problem so as we have seen the key was expressing putting that's a funny part putting our variable on both sides and comparing the numerators denominators and considering two separate cases and that should be enough so thank you very much for watching i hope that you learned something new this time and i will see you next time Goodbye.